So, hello everybody, John Spencer, uh, I wanted to delve into some of the misconceptions and the differences between the Western perception and actually global perception, even in Thailand with uh, people who have had less uh, exposure with the topic also have misconceptions about it and some of the FAQs and questions that get asked about it <coughs> vipassana yeah or vipassana gamatan or gamatana vipassana and forest tradition or mindfulness meditation yeah and uh, so I thought I'd start off with what the common questions are so what is done in vipassana Vipassana is a way of self-transformation through self-observation. Yeah. It focuses on the deep interconnection between mind and body, which can be experienced directly by disciplined attention to the physical sensations that form the life of the body and that continuously interconnect and condition the life of the mind. Well, in trying to attain Vipassana, that's one of the things you do. There are... 40 categories of practice. The first category is composed of 16 different practices. So it's more than 40. But actually, you if you know how to practice, you just do one thing. It's observe yourself through the lens of various noble truths, marks of existence, and aggregates, which I shall explain afterwards <coughs> a bit later, further on. So, first thing I'd like to say is that Vipassana is not a way of self-transformation through self-observation. Self-observation to attain self-transformation or the self-transformation that happens through self-observation or self-purification and e e evolution from impure to pure or base to, um, what do you say, subtle, <laughs> Yeah, is not vipassana. Vipassana is not a practice. Vipassana is the attainment. And we means special or super or special in English, yeah. And patsana means patana like in Thai. Patana means to develop or evolve. Yeah. So patsana. It means a special evolution. It also means insight. So patsana can be also tatsana, uh, uh, view, yeah, vision. So special vision, inner vision, yeah, and also the development of inner vision, yeah. But the practice is not vipassana. You don't have vipassana until you've completed the practice. When you have completed the practice, then you have attained or you are in a state of vipassana, yeah? It is the vipassana yan, yeah? The state of mind and heart, and uh, the state of existence in whatever you think of as your being, or the being, the awareness, the consciousness, or the, the, the that which knows, yeah? That which experiences, then that is vipassana and so vipassana is not the practice vipassana is the goal you know so the first misunderstanding let's have a look at this vipassana meditation it's going to be by Gunka, who i like he received his teaching from sayadaw yeah a burmese monk who passed it on through his Krubajan, his teachers in lineage like in thailand ajan sao and uh Rumpu man Ajahn Man, or as some people like to spell it, Mun, M-U-N, Mun, because Man, in London you say Man, but a U is a U, U, in Thai it's a U, in German it's a U, in North England it's a U, and in London it's a U, but, but, but actually it should be Boat, Boat, yeah, so anyway, pronunciation. So, vipassana, which means to see things as they really are. Hmm. Well, 
you do see things as they really are if you have vipassana. But that's not really what it means. It means special vision, inner vision, and developed vision. Uh, uh, it's one of India's most ancient techniques of meditation. It was taught more than 2,500 years ago as a universal remedy for universal ills. <clears throat> the techniques are taught at a 10-day ten ten, ten residential courses. First of all, they should be free. If you pass them now, you don't teach that for money. Uh, and practice sufficiently to experience its beneficial results. Good, there are no charges for the courses, not even to cover the cost of food. Glad to hear that and accommodation. They're met by donations, who by people completed a course and experienced the benefits, wish to give others the opportunity to also benefit. Well, that's good, huh? And that's because, well, you see, they're still referring it, though, for the Vipassana meditation. And people think that they are practicing Vipassana, and that's really important. You're not practicing Vipassana. You are practicing mindfulness, yeah, and becoming aware of subtle inner processes that will give you insight into the true nature of reality and your own experience of it, yeah. But vipassana is what will happen when you awaken to all of that <clears throat> through your practice. So I, I lay importance on that because the monks who taught me played a lot of importance on understanding that point that you're not practicing vipassana you don't e you're not even anywhere near vipassana yet you're trying to get vipassana through practicing okay mindfulness meditation and the 40 practices you call them what you want but it's not vipassana yeah so the first pra and also you can call the 40 practices you can also explain them completely the same and complete them through the four satipatthana which is mindfulness of the body the mindfulness of feelings the mindfulness of mental formations and the mindfulness of all of the phenomena slash dhammas natural things which happen which are in existence yeah and the first gayanupatsana satipatthana the mindfulness on the body is also in the 40 practices and that is mindfulness of the breath on 16 levels the first the first four levels are to do with the breath and the body the second four levels are to do with uh, y you notice emotions as well and you notice the mind and you notice other dhammas so actually all four satipatthanas are included within the 16 breath practices of the first satipatthana and each of the 16, four of each 16 are put into four different things, yeah, body, mind, uh, feelings, mind, and other dhammas, just like the Satipatthanas themselves. So it's strange that the first Satipatthana, if practiced to its completion and fully realized, actually contains all four, even though it's only the first of four, but all four are found within the first Satipatthana. And to complete that is actually to have completed all 40 of Vipassana. So it's basically a practice that leads to awakening of Vipassana. Yeah. And as you can practice it, look through a lens of there's 40 categories of practice and practice them one by one or all together through these 40 approaches. Or you can look at it as um, a lesser set of approaches as the four Satipatthanas. Or you can just take the first Satipatthana. Or you could take the first Satipatthana and split it into the 16 different individual subcategories and do them individually, <clears throat> which we humans like to do. But actually, they're all the same path. All roads lead to Rome. They're just different ways of approaching the same goal or attaining the same goal, yeah? You can get a ball in a goal by heading it. You could use your chest you could do a volley you could do a backward scissor kick you could even do a handball and get a red card 
But there's more than one way to fry an egg, and there's definitely more than one way to practice to achieve the same goal. So there you go. You could do apidamma, you could do vipassana, you could do satipatthanas, but in the end it's all what people mean by vipassana practice, which it isn't. It's just practice, yeah. Practicing in different methods to achieve awakening and purification of the mind and to escape all causes of suffering and if you've understood enough, rebirth in the samsaric realms. Yeah. So this place looks okay, but what's this? Vipassana has also been taught in prisons. Yeah, that's good. But what is the Vipassana course? It's on the Gunka, so that's okay. It's already a good start. This is anyway Dhamma.org. This is a, um, an ethical website. Huh? So you can see that is. But there is a lot of Vipassana places. So what is the practice of Vipassana? Observing thoughts and sensations without attachment. Fostering a profound level of self-awareness and self-awareness or non-self-awareness. <laughs> it's actually badly put, but yeah. Of awareness, not self-awareness. A profound level of inner awareness, of, uh, of awareness of inner processes or of the processes occurring, but not self-awareness. And equanimity. If you've got self-awareness, you won't have much equanimity because you'll be self-protective and you have an ego. So retreat-based practice. Vipassana is often practiced in retreat settings. So calm.com. That's a bullshit automated website for sure. What are the five rules? What it means is the five precepts of Buddhism. So no killing, no stealing, no lying, no um, adulterous doesn't mean all sexual activity actually it depends on the case so if you are married and have children and you want to keep the five precepts don't think you can't because it says to abstain from all sexual activity here yeah don't think you can't what it means is don't be adulterous you can have sex with your wife but don't be adulterous and don't have perverse sexual activity so it has to be healthy So, to abstain from telling lies, not only causing schisms, telling people true stories about other people so they don't like that person too, to cause dislike between others, that is also the precept of Mosawata, false speech. Doesn't mean not to lie, it means do not, do not speak inauspiciously. And sexual activity depends on your precept and the level of your precept if you're married if you if you are uh, single or if you're in a temple in white abstain from stealing sure but what is stealing so you have knowingly stealing yeah because every time we pick a berry from a tree are we stealing does the tree think we're stealing I don't think the tree decides I'm going to give my fruit to this guy because he's good but not to this guy because he's a thief and it doesn't think the bird is a thief either so that's a human thing so what happens in a 10 day why does this have to be 10 days I don't understand except that it's the minimum you need it requires students to spend most of their time alone without speaking inside their own mind meditating for up to 10 hours a day or over a period uh, over a period of 10 hours that's wrong because uh, kamatan, the basis of the practice to attain vipassana, is the attempt to remain mindful 24 hours a day, but it has nothing to do with sitting in a lotus position. You can be walking, eating. It's about being awakened and completely aware whilst you're reading, talking, breathing, being aware of your breathing while you're talking being aware of your thoughts and your feelings and how they're changing and the fact that they're impermanent and your moods and to be aside from them just observe them see their impermanence their changeability see the suffering or dissatisfaction in them see that because they come and go and you're still there after they've gone that they are not you and not self so you understand the, the uh, impermanence 
the dissatisfactory nature and the, the not permanent self nature of your thoughts and your feelings and you stop identifying with them through that insight yeah that you don't think these are my feelings they're just feelings you know if you had dog poop on the windscreen of your car you wouldn't think that the windscreen of your car was partially composed of dog poop you would just think it's a piece of dog poop stuck on the win on on the windshield that you can wipe off and so are these false views we have yeah and false understandings and false intentions and impure intentions impure instincts if we can see them within then we can get disgusted by them want to clean them out it's like if you see a piece of poop on the bottom of your shoe first thing you want to do is clean it yeah but if you see a piece of poop inside your heart sometimes you don't want to look at it and you don't clean it but uh, gamatan or what most people are calling vipassana which is the final attainment not the practice uh, but the the practice leading to vipassana to the attainment of vipassana vipassana yeah uses that method so <clears throat> not you walking you sitting to be awake all the time and the point of going in a meditation room for an hour when the bell goes at the end bing okay I did my one hour's meditation I feel I've done my chores now now I can go downstairs watch a movie and go back to forgetting I'm going into the dream world and eat an ice cream well then you've just defeated the object because the object is not to meditate for one hour a day and then remain unenlightened and unaware the rest of the day the state of mind you achieve after the meditation in your daily meditation room or if you do that yeah, as an example is to show you that's how your mind should be all the time so when you walk out of your meditation room after your meditation session or you walk out of your retreat after your 10 day retreat what you're supposed to do is not say well I did that I'll come back next year now I can go back to just dreaming away again <laughs> that's for nothing you became weak what you're supposed to do is sustain it as long as you can until it fades and when it fades go back or practice don't let it fade because if you did it in the center or in the temple or with your teacher then you know what to do you can do it at home you know, sometimes you're too lazy so you need to go back to the temple with the teacher so they tell you to do it if not you won't do it because you're too lazy otherwise there's nothing stopping you from just doing it yourself so what are the disadvantages talking with other meditators is forbidden on a 10 day course yeah but not when you're a monk practicing vipassana and you're living in a cave in the forest and you're traveling monk and you meet other monks who are on the same path you can exchange dhamma not with everybody but with certain individuals when you meet you call sahai tam or ganliyana meet means dharma friends for sure an exchange although it's each person's individual experience is completely different there are some things that do align so you can talk to each other but not on a 10 day course yeah or a 7 day course yeah and this much sitting gets painful especially from the fourth day onwards when you're asked to spend three one hour periods each day without shifting your posture has never been given as a practice in Gamatan to get Vipassana or let's just call it Vipassana but that's not what it's called it's not the name of the practice Vipassana is what you attain so the practice I'm going to call it the practice yeah. the practice what most people call vipassana has nothing to do with torturing yourself for three one hour periods a day without shifting your posture now, I can sit for six hours in the lotus position without shifting my posture because I've been doing it for about 30 years sit in the same position all day hardly ever move but I don't know why I said that anyway not that that's anything cool but um There is, uh, I was a monk, you know, Thai Theravada Tudong monk of forest tradition style practice, Vipassana Gamatan, and I lived in a cave in the forest. So 
solitary. Well, there were two other monks there. Some, one of them I talked to, the other one I didn't. And uh, so there was one monk. And um, you just don't do that. Vipassana has nothing to do, the practice, sorry, the practice has nothing to do with sitting, torturing yourself for hours. The Buddha actually told you that's not the middle way. You can never, ever, ever get meditation <laughs> when your legs are hurting, yeah, or when you're uncomfortable, yeah. He learned that from torturing his own body through self-starvation, yeah. So this is an extremely wrong answer, yeah. Because why on earth should you be sitting there for so long, torturing yourself? Vipassana, attaining Vipassana, you don't do it by sitting meditating. You do sit and meditate, that's Samatha meditation, that's not Vipassana, that is Samatha. Nothing to do with Vipassana. But you use them together, you use Samatha with meditation. But you use vipassana for insight because samatha, all that does is still your mind. But it is vipassana that looks at the mind and the feelings and notices and observes and gets the insight. Right. So this is completely wrong. I would like to debunk that completely. Don't take any courses where they're going to tell you to sit there all day without moving with backache because vipassana should be done by focusing you start with anabhanasati the first thing is the breath it's very basic don't force it just be aware of your in breath and your out breath whether it's slow or fast doesn't matter when you're washing the dishes brushing your teeth just brush them it's a boring moment anyway waiting for the bus whatever reading the newspaper see if you can be aware of that in-breath and be aware of the out-breath as you're reading, as you're washing the dishes, as you're having a poop on the on the loo, on the toilet, yeah? as you're looking at a menu, that's really hard, yeah? and as you're ordering something in the restaurant, that's even really harder because you, you, you're losing it already into desires of hunger and food, and, but anyway. So see which are more challenging than others, but just try and remain awake and aware in every moment. Not just when just sitting down there with your legs crossed till your feet go to sleep. Unless you've been like me in Thailand for thirty years, sat with your legs crossed on the floor. Because most of my any other Westerners who visit me, they last about five minutes on the floor and then they jump on the sofa. Okay. So why Vipassana is not for everyone? Well, I suppose for the same reason that um, reggae music isn't for everyone. So, social isolation, if you have clinical anxiety, clinical depression or psychosis, participating in a Vipassana retreat with its strict rule of silence and limited contact with the outside world may worsen your condition. It may also better it. Well, we pass in our course in the West, like sitting down torturing yourself with some idiot who thinks he's a teacher, ordering you around, sending you all on the wrong way to misunderstanding and confusion, and yeah, sure. But in a temple with advanced monks in Thailand, doing it the proper way, no. I think it, uh, that's one of the best things you could do, better than go seeing a psychiatrist. You go to a temple and practice some Dhamma. But vipassana, what do they mean by that, you know? You start very simple. You start very simple. And you slowly, slowly... It took me three years in and out of temples for weeks at a time to even just begin to understand and be able to practice properly and know the, the, the proper approach. So this really kind of concerns me a lot that I see so, vipassana is great that the world is getting interested in it, but... Like ayahuasca, shamanism, yoga pants, yoga mats, diving schools, Thai boxing schools, and God knows what. Although there are very many good ones, the few first ones were good, and then it became a fashion, and it's all over. Yeah, ayahuasca shamanism, performed by people who are not shamans and have no wisdom. Yeah, the woman, the woman who first gave magic mushrooms to a westerner. 
they smashed her house. Yeah, she was she was the the top uh, healer and the top shaman. Yeah, and because she passed that out of their culture, she had her whole life ruined. Yeah. So the four stages of vipassana: the rise and fall, fear and disadvantage and disenchantment, delight in deliverance and equanimity. Hmm. Vipassana yana, you see. These that is the attainment when you reach it. That's the end of the path. Yeah. That's the end of the path. Yeah. Niroda dissolution. Yeah. Can I learn vipassana on my own? In principle, anyone successfully completed a 10-day Vipassana course as taught by N. S. N. Gunga can decide to do a self course. I would say anybody who's also been a Buddhist monk in Thailand and learned under one of the great masters, or various great masters like myself, and lived in a cave and practiced, could not just do a self course, can probably give a better course than whoever wrote that. <laughs> is Vipassana free? Yes, Vipassana is completely free. How often should you do Vipassana? You cannot do Vipassana. You can practice to attain Vipassana. Once a year to attend a 10 day Vipassana course and donate at the end. So it's free, but yeah, you can. Do, if you don't donate, you feel a bit dingy, don't you? So, actually, and if you donate a little bit, a lot of people have found out that donation is actually more profitable than charging people, because although you get some stingy people just put in a little bit, once in a while you get a very rich person who puts in more than the rest of them put together. because of the free thing you get some very rich people visiting sometime and they support so actually it's more profitable than actually charging but if people get some good practice out of it it's okay but it should be free once a year why should you go once a year to their centre it's definitely not a retreat it's hard work if you're going into a gunker course with the intention of taking a vacation, you're in for a rude awakening. Well, this is really, you know, torture. What what Western students have really, really distorted this. They're really, 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 really distorted. It's really distorted. Vipassana is middle path. It's not diamond path or the hardest path or the suffering path. It's the middle path. You should not torture yourself. And you should not be tortured into doing things like that. Does it affect sleep? Well, you sleep better if you if you pr if you're properly practicing vipassana and dhamma every day. You always sleep much better anyway. It's just a fact. Don't believe me, try it. What do you eat during Vipassana? Whatever they give you as an as an offering. There is no rule to what you should eat during Vipassana, such as garbanzo beans and grain. In carrots! The Buddha had Vipassana because he was enlightened. And they would the bhikkhus would take either arms offerings, whatever they were given whether it was healthy or not and the arahants actually would uh, uh, they didn't really follow the rule of not eating after 12 a.m. because they didn't have any desire for food as entertainment or just to eat because it's delicious the only time they ever ate is when the body needed some energy so they would just pluck two berries if that was enough to keep them going for half an hour and not eat anything unless their body was saying it needs energy. There was absolutely no desire there. So Arahants, enlightened monks in that time, including the Buddha, the first one, the great teacher, oh, the, the self-awakened one, not the others who became awakened through his teachings, 
uh, didn't have to follow that rule. The rule was for those who still have the desires to eat and eat because it's delicious. So, it's affect your sleep. Can Vipassana lead to Samadhi? The answer is a big yes. In Vipassana, the Samadhi is Sampachana, which is Samadhi with awareness of what is arising and passing away of impermanence. Still wrong because Vipassana, first of all, is not the practice, it's the goal. So in the practice that leads to Vipassana, Samadhi, so sitting, meditating in the normal way most people know of, is one of the practices you do, yeah? And when you do that, you observe, which is what most people think is vipassana. It is not, is gamatan, which means the basis of action or the basis of your practice, your approach, your approach to the meditation of samati, samata. Samata is sitting and meditating. Samati is the state of meditation you have attained, yeah? And you have different levels of samati, yeah, yeah, sampachanya. Samati is not sampachanya, yeah. So here, yeah, samati is sampachanya. No, it is not. Samati and sampachanya together are something, but samati is focus, and sampachanya is sustaining it, meaning com sustained. So, if you have sustenance, it means the, the power to hold it and not let it slip. So, samadhi is a state of focus or dhyana or absorption or one-pointedness, depending, because fourth jhana absorption is not one-pointedness. It's all-pointedness. There is no central point or external perimeter. There's no separateness. So, there's different states of samadhi. And sampachanya means sustaining the samadhi without letting it slip and forgetting. So samadhi is not sampachanya. And in vipassana, in what do you mean vipassana? In the practice that leads to vipassana. Yeah? So the answer is no. In the practice, which people falsely call vipassana, because vipassana is not the practice, it's the attainment after the practice. You practice samadhi and develop sampachanya because you don't get it at first. The ability to sustain your samadhi once you've attained it. yeah. And samadhi with awareness of what is arising and passing away within and noticing that impermanence is one of those qualities but not just that from what's arising and passing away be they emotions, thoughts, uh, sense physical sensations or whatever they come and go the observation of those events within yeah whilst meditating in samadhi focusing on something your brain's going to think here and there and everywhere you can't control it what you can do is observe it and the other phenomena that happen within you as they come and go and change they don't come and go they're always there they just change their state your thought is always there, it's just changing what it's thinking about, but it's always thinking. Your brain's always thinking, it never stops until you're dead. Yeah. So uh, this is wrong. Can be personally to samadhi. The question is wrong, never mind the answer. The question is based in complete ignorance of what vipassana is and what samadhi is. Can be personal cure depression? The purpose of vipassana is not to cure diseases. Yes, it is. The disease of wrong view. The disease of not being enlightened, of impurity. Somebody really practices vipassana. You cannot really practice vipassana because vipassana is not a practice. It's a state that you attain yeah, after the practice has been completed. Learns to be happy and balanced in all circumstances. No, although that might be true in a sense, but that's definitely not the fruit of vipassana. The fruit of vipassana is enlightenment, which goes far beyond what is being called happy and balanced in all circumstances. Vipassana, 
if attained means you are a Buddha. And if you are not a Buddha, if you're not a enlightened yet, then you are still trying to attain Vipassana. Yeah. Why do people cry during Vipassana? It's a natural expression of vulnerability and opening up. A letting go, a release in a perfectly natural state to be in during meditation. No. Why do people cry during Vipassana? Well, let's see if I can find an answer for you. Uh, um, second rapture for no reason. No. Buddhist rapture, BT. I have to write Buddhism. Shit. Okay, second rapture. Can an arahant cry? I'm not going into that. The seven steps to enlightenment. No. Rapture is one of them. Yeah, BT. Yeah. So if we write BT rapture, we might get the Wikipedia page. Unless we've got it here. What it is, is rapture. I know because it's a second rapture and it happened to me. Um, it's You get goosebumps all over your body. Pretty, here we go. So here we go. The, the raptures... What happened with the Kavichara? Sust here, sustained thought. Um, weak rapture, pilo erection, which is the hair standing up, which is one thing that happened to me. Yeah? And you can also cry. With this one and this one also, you can cry. With any of them, actually, you can cry. Going down rapture explodes inside the body like waves. It's not really well explained. That's not how it feels. I spent a long time wondering what this means and then realized I'd actually had it. But the, the explanation was not how I felt it to be. Uh, sorry, this one. Like waves lapping against the shore. Like you are the shore and there's something like waves lapping against you inside. Yeah. Um, but only the last two are considered truly BT. The first four are a preparation, which is the jhanic factor, the jhana absorption. Yeah. So, samatha is the tranquility of mind, jhana is absorption, sukha is a happiness, upeka is equanimity. Yeah. But samatha is not um, sampachanya. Yeah. It's not the Sampachanya, but it's, you need Samatha and Sampachanya. If not, you cannot. Uh, your Samatha, your Samati focus will disappear if you can't hold it, yeah? I'm not sure how they sell Sampachanya. I saw that Sampachanya. I saw it. There you go. I can't do the special characters on this. So it's a term of central importance. Yeah. The mental process by which one continuously monitors one's own body and mind in the practice of samatha is to note the occurrence of laxity and excitation. It is often found in the pair of mindfulness and introspection or mindfulness and clear comprehension. So sati sampachanya which we use this in Thai, sati, which is same as samati. The sati means you've got common sense, you've got your, your your senses around you, yeah? So you're focused and clear-minded, and sampachanya, that it is sustained, yeah? And constant, not unwavering, yeah? So continuity, yeah, is continuous. Yeah, clear knowing, constant, thorough understanding. And so sampachanya actually means to sustain the samadhi. Yeah. Okay. So. Ah, where were we? Yeah. Crying. Crying is uh, a form of rapture, and it actually means that you're on the on the way. 
it's a good sign. If you get goosebumps and start crying, it means you're entering the first jhana level of absorption. But don't let it go to your head. Keep working at it. So why is repressing a painful? Painful inside. I would just say existence is painful if you're unenlightened because of dukkha vetana, uh, afflictive emotions. So that's a, just the wrong question. It's not vipassana that's painful. Vipassana is not painful. Vipassana is enlightenment. What they mean is, why is the practice that you go to centers in the West where they make you sit until your legs have gone to cramps <laughs> and do things that is just self-torture and has nothing to do with... Uh, the forest tradition way, gamatana, or if you want to call it, vipassana. Yeah. So, can you talk during vipassana? During a retreat? Depends on the rules of the center, I suppose, but uh, most of these retreats in these centers for Westerners, according to what I learned as a gamatana, vipassana forest tradition practicing style Buddhist monk in Thailand living in the forest in a cave and trying to practice because living in a cave doesn't mean you practiced you can live in a, in an apartment or under a cardboard box and practice if you want so having been a monk and lived in a cave doesn't really mean a practice but actually I did if not why would I have gone and lived in a cave and eaten once a day and had to going an arms round through the forest for about three to five hours because there was nobody to beg from except for a few hunters in the forest and so on it wouldn't be really much fun would, would it if it wasn't just to practice you're not going to make any money out of it and I gave everything I owned away thinking I was not going to disrobe so when I disrobed I didn't have a penny I had to borrow some money to buy some second hand pants and a t-shirt with so anyway uh, how do you feel the sensation in vipassana? Can you stop calling it vipassana, please? In, in the practice that leads to vipassana, that job is done anabana sati, the practice of awareness of the breath on the small area under the nostrils above the upper lip. Doesn't have to be. Some people are a bit numb there. You can do it through your mouth or your lips, or you can sense it um, as you wish, or you can focus between your eyes. But the breath is very important. The Buddha played, they called it the body within the body. and But you shouldn't have to use the nostrils. You, you should do what's comfortable for you because everybody's a bit different. If you can, it's very good, of course. Uh, what you should notice is not... is the air passing through the orifice in and out. As you go further, then you try to hold it in your mind that you hold it on the, the air in the tip of the nose, the air in the throat, the air in the chest, and the air in the navel, in the solar plexus, yeah? In and out, in all four places at the same time, within the mind, in the same moment. When you've done that, then you're getting to fulfill the 16 practices of breath mindfulness. But you begin with just the tip of your nose until you can hold more things in your consciousness at, yeah. in one time more chunks of data in one go like remembering a phone number first you can remember just three all of a sudden you can remember all ten you have to repetition it's the same with meditation and the practice which leads to the state which is known as vipassana which is not a practice although everybody else seems to think it is so how to survive vipassana What's this 10 days? This is very gunka, yeah? has to be 10 days. No, it doesn't. It has to be all your life. Because if you've learned what to do, how to practice and observe, what's the point in stopping? What's the point in it? The point is to become enlightened. So 10 days ain't enough, is it? Okay, to start, go do a course. But why does it have to be 10 days? <laughs> Is Vipassana a Buddhist? It's rooted in Theravada Buddhism. 
Yeah, in another question, it answers saying it's Burmese and was introduced by Ajahn Sayadaw. Samatha Vipassana. That is, Samatha is not Vipassana, and Vipassana is not Samatha. What you do is you use Samatha as a practice of normal meditation, legs like cross. And you use vipassana, but vipassana you don't just use when you're in meditation. You use to remain aware and observant throughout the day, of night. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> the ten-day rule. There is no ten-day rules. The Buddha did not make that rule. Who gave that? What? How many hours a day do you meditate in vipassana? Not at all. There's nothing in Vipassana that says you have to meditate. And in fact, I wrote a little bit about this on my website, on one of my blog posts, which are very varied. They're not all about Buddhism. But I'm getting sick of this now. On the black screen on Google, let's uh, get to my blog section. On the four, Here we go. The 40 Vipassana Gamatana practices, yeah? So, it says here Vipassana Gamatana is a form of meditation. Also, I create misunderstanding because I say Vipassana. The Gamatana, the basis of action leading to Vipassana, yeah? That's how I see it, yeah? Vipassana means insight, more or less, or clear seeing. Gamatana means refers to a meditation subject or a method of practice. When combined, these terms encapsulate the essence of Vipassana Gamatana as a systematic approach to developing penetrating insight through meditative practice. Yeah? Yeah? So, <clears throat> the journey of insight. The heart of it, Vipassana is the practice of cultivating insight. Yeah? through observing the true nature of phenomena. So, you observe your experiences without attachment or aversion and try to gain insight, insight into the impermanent, unsatisfactory and selfless nature of reality. Yeah? And the objective, or one of them, is to break down the illusions of permanence and identity that cloud our perception, which keep us unenlightened. Yeah? And the Eightfold Path and Vipassana. Yeah? So right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Yeah. Um, right effort, for example, actually means the four samapatanas to leave the inauspicious deeds of the past behind and uh, to not destroy the good deeds of the past and to create good deeds now and in the future and to avoid inauspicious deeds, thoughts, or words no one in the future, those four practices, which basically means stop doing bad and just do good. <laughs> that means two things, not four, if you think about it. So uh, you observe your mental states and emotions as they arise and pass away. You have to sit there with your legs behind your head until the blood doesn't run anymore and you feel like moving but you dance, so you just start sweating because you're going to get thrown out of the 10-day Vipassana course. <laughs> well, maybe not, because then you won't donate, will you? But anyway. Uh, so you can penetrate the layers of conditioned habits and gain insight into the nature of suffering and the path to liberation. Yeah. So it's not just an intellectual exercise, but a journey that transcends words and concepts which is why it can't be really explained, rather just seen through your own practice. Which is why you don't really need to... There's enough on the internet these days and MP3 teachings from great monks such as Tanisaro Piku or Tanisaro Bhikkhu and Ajahn Chayasaro, who I'll show you shortly, as recommendation if you really want to know what is Vipassana. I'm going to call this what is Vipassana in this video. Uh, um part one because there's a lot more this doesn't tell you what it is it just tells you what it isn't uh, and so 
um, the categories of given allegedly by the Buddha of the 40 practices that lead to vipassana huh? it's not vipassana it's the practices that lead to it so gasin that's not vipassana that's gasin practice yeah? so you're not practicing vipassana when you start you don't sit there meditating for 10 hours a day for 10 days <coughs> sorry I don't know why Gunka did that except for that he probably thought that 10 days was minimum to get a true taste and see any fruits which is probably true 3 days ain't enough you want to run away after the 3rd day if you can make it after a week to 10 yeah maybe you still want to run away you'd be glad to go but you'll feel like you've got some benefit so I suppose that's why but that has turned into the assumption that it has to be 10 days and that was part of the formula the Buddha did not give that what he gave was 40 practices yeah which lead to vipassana so the first is patawi gasin the, the 10 gasinas the elemental meditations were patawi gasin he told you to make a disc of earth reddish brown out of clay and stare at it yeah and stare and stare and stare and stare and then close your eyes and see it as an image impressed on your mind illuminated it'll wander and fade away and go off to the left out of sight and you learn how to hold it and you learn how to make it grow and shrink in your mind and hold it sustained there yeah the, the, the negative image when you stare at it long enough and then close your eyes you'll see a negative impression on your mind on your forehead on your mind's eye so Patawi is earth Apo is water yeah so that would be blue or you would say take a, a clear bowl of clear pure water and stare into it yeah and stare and stare and stare until you feel wateriness until you unify with the element that you lose yourself you forget yourself dhyana absorption in yeah, meditation if you want me to put it in a nutshell just say it's a bit like when you forget yourself sometimes you're lost in thought for a moment in the day and somebody speaks to you say oh sorry I just completely forgot myself there there is actually something in the statement you were actually in jhana as a non-practiced meditator without even realizing it so everybody has been in jhana in their lives they just didn't realize it every time you just drifted off and forgot yourself you were actually in jhana so if you ever want to try to get jhana just remember what you were doing when you forgot yourself in the kitchen the other day and do the same thing right so why yoga sin is uh, you can stare at the sky for that but the buddha actually gave and you can the the hindus they use cards so they have this red triangle for the fire uh the, i believe it's a uh the yellow circle i believe for the pitagasin yeah the red element lohitagasin or gasina is a blood red yeah otakagasin you know the white element alokagasin is the worldless element light element sorry akasakasin is the space element or uh, vacuum element emptiness element so you do these meditations on each of those I call them staring meditations where you stare at an external object and then you internalize it and learn how to control it with your inner vision so that's the development of a first psychic power and ability for further insight <clears throat> then there is the category of the asupakamatan yeah, the contemplation, contemplation of repulsiveness or uncleanliness repulsiveness I don't like because that's an emotion and a reaction which is suffering and the Buddha didn't teach that so I would say contemplation of that which is should not be seen as clean because this thing of clean and uncleanly seeing something as clean when it isn't really is an illusion it's a bit of a problem for me using contemplation of repulsiveness because repulsiveness is just as much of an illusory perception as attractiveness beauty and ugliness so the only purpose of contemplation of repulsiveness of things is so that you lose your attachment 
to things that you thought were really attractive when you realize they're not so pure and attractive, yeah? Rather that it is un impure and unclean. But actually, to feel repulsed at something is just as unenlightened as to feel attracted to something. So I've got a bit I'd like to people to contemplate that. That asupat should be more contemplation of the fact that nothing is completely pure in the world arahants are pure buddhas are pure purified but otherwise even a beautiful woman she's full of blood and guts and has a shit bag and a beautiful guy a handsome guy is also shit bag and might even have little animals in the hairs around his balls and stuff so anyway if you look at hair on your head under a microscope you'll see it's pretty you'll be disgusted but it's not disgusting. That's an unenlightened reaction. And so is attraction. Wow, Brad Pitt's so handsome. Wow, Angelina Jolie's so beautiful, right? So be careful of the asupakamatana, the contemplation of repulsiveness, converted into contemplation of the fact that nothing is attractive or repulsive, but that you're looking at things that are going to repulse you so that you don't attract yourself to the human body or physicality because if you see it involves contemplating the unattractive nature of the body I would say that the, the body that is neither attractive or unattractive and just disattached from it don't be disgusted by it because that's suffering but Buddhism doesn't teach that for some reason so that I would like to insert that as my own quantum Dhamma but that, that does not actually get stated in the Dhamma and this Dhamma is contemplation of Asupa, dirtiness. But I think something got overlooked there because if cleanliness is an illusion, then so is dirtiness. And if the reaction of pleasure towards, um, uh, temporary pleasure and attachment to that towards things you think are beautiful is illusory and samsaric, then so is the aversion or the attachment to not having to see or experience that which is repulsive because it's not actually aversion it's also clinging clinging to not wanting to encounter this and wanting to only encounter what I like and not encounter what I don't like so not wanting to encounter a bloated corpse is actually wanting to not encounter it's all wanting, it's all craving it's just you have negative craving and positive craving yeah which is another thing that I don't find explained much in Buddhism. And it's non-dualistic, so I don't see why these uh, 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 I, these dualistic things are being inserted, that um, purity uh, and repulsiveness, uh, sorry, repulsiveness and attractiveness. Attractiveness is said to be illusory, and you need to get rid of it through contemplation of repulsiveness but if attractiveness is illusory and it's something we're attached to repulsiveness is also illusory and it's something that we're attached to not wanting to have to encounter so uh, that we're averse to so we think averse is like repulsion of a magnet and attraction is like attraction of a magnet but actually, aversion means I don't want to. It means I want not to. Yeah. I don't want to or I want not to. It says it's wanting, just said the other way around. So it's all craving. It's craving. So you look at a bloated corpse. You contemplate a green and decomposed corpse. A corpse with the oozing fluids. A dismembered corpse. A partially eaten corpse. A scattered corpse in pieces, like drawn and quartered. A mutilated corpse, axed or whatever. Or well, lost its shape. A corpse filled with blood and pus. Blech. A maggot infested corpse. Yeah, take a sick bag with you. A skeletonized corpse, right? So it's basically supposed to... A monk would do that at night in a graveyard. In a charnel ground, sorry. Where there was a corpse or... Uh, it's very difficult these days. But you can find, I've found, I've seen my own, but I couldn't look at that. But uh, 
when I was a monk, I used to sit in front of the crim- cremation machine. I used to meditate in front of it and think one day I'll be going in there. One day my body will be going in one of those. And stuff like that, which is also gamatana. So this asupat is so that you don't get attached to thinking you're handsome and beautiful and shiny hair and my lovely nails and you cut your nails when you when you're a monk you um watch your hair fall when they shave your head and you look at it as not self it's just dirty old hair it's not me anymore it's on the floor sweep it away for god's sake my fingernails well with your tooth pulled out you don't think the tooth is you anymore do you so um then you have the anusati kamatan it is Buddha Nutsati, recollection of the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, your morality, your precepts, to remember to practice generosity, to remember the angelic beings and to think of them, respect them, and to uh, keep them in your thoughts. Always to be aware that you can die at any moment. Mindfulness of body is, mm, I think that needs to talk for itself. Uh, recollection of peace. Mm, recollection of peace I would say sustaining yes recollection of peace to remember what peace means so that you work towards it and recollection of arahantship to understand what wonderful reward lies at the end of the path so that you have the strength to keep going because arahantship nibbana the mind stilled oh, hopefully one day Category of Atisila Sikapa Dakamatan. So the training in higher morality. So it's like um, the ten precepts. Yeah, not harming, abstaining from inauspicious acts, uh, practicing good acts, renouncing all forms of wrong livelihood, refraining from all forms of false speech. Now that's a long talk, just for itself. What is false speech? So we'll go. I'd like to give a whole talk on what is musawata, viramani, so abstaining, yeah, and refraining from divisive speech. That's false speech, you see. You see, in the five precepts, not lying, what well, they say, not lying, actually, it's not. It's musawata, viramani, 35, yeah, yeah, number 35. In the five precepts, you say Musa Avata Viramani Sikabatang Samatiyami, the precept of abstaining from false speech, I will hold. Yeah. So what false speech? Yeah. What it actually means, divisive speech means cause telling something about somebody to another person that causes them to dislike that person causes a schism is divisive speech but that is also false speech it's just more explained here for when you're a bit more practiced but actually the five precepts if you understand them properly include harsh speech idle chatter divisive speech and false speech yeah these four are all musawata viramani musawata wrong speech yeah but it's just split up into bisuna parusa means harsh bisuna means divisive that divides musawata means not true like lying yeah but also means incorrect false speech yeah false yeah so um it's just more defined. Idle chatter. Hi, do you like grapes? Ooh, this chocolate milk's nice, isn't it? The Buddha called the animal talk. And you shouldn't speak it unless it's Dhamma. Speak only Dhamma. Sexual misconduct. That can be discussed. Yeah. But Abrahmacharya Veramani in the ten, ten precepts, what that means is actually do not have any sex at all and do not masturbate. Suramira Yamacha Pamata Suramira 
ยมมาจะประมาทสถานาเวรมณี risk abstaining from intoxicants causing heedlessness intoxicants that cause you to be heedless meaning make mistakes be unskillful so it's two sips of wine before going to sleep going to intoxicate you and make you unskillful or is six beers in the pub and a fight afterwards with somebody for trying to chat up your girlfriend being unskillful what's an intoxicant that causes heedlessness does it mean abstain from all intoxicants because I would say then that even a sunrise can leave you intoxicated but it doesn't make you heedless So does it mean drugs and alcohol, or does it? What does it mean? You know, up to you. You investigate. Then you had the data w a t a w a n a w a t a n a Sorry, elemental meditation of the four. The data w a t a n a Earth, water, fire, and air. That everything in your body is either solid, liquid, or uh, gaseous, vaporous. Uh, 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 Airy, you know, and fire means temperature. You have a temperature, so everything has. You have the three states of matter, and those three states of matter have a temperature. And actually, it's temperature, fire, that causes something solid, like earth, to become something liquid, like lava, and even to become something gaseous, yeah, like the gas that comes out of a volcano. So. Or you could say ice, water, and vapor, steam. Yeah, it's all the same H 2 o And the thing that changes it is this one of the four elements. There's one element that has a, a catalyst effect on the other three. You use heat, raising it or lowering it. So you use what temperature? Sorry, not heat, because heat and cold don't exist. You only have temperature. Use temperature on an infinite scale thermometer to go up and down to make any substance, depending on its melting point, or solidification point, or vaporization point, change its state from solid to liquid to gas or vapor. Yeah, and that is why the element of fire is very, very, very important in alchemy. With the Lucy, who b u s h a f i who pray to fire or, or study the fire element. Anyway, with transformation, yeah, and with alchemy was very important. So, uh, the Brahman Viharas is the 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 sublime abodes. It actually, means the four uh, ce- celestial abodes, but it actually means the four practices which lead you to become like an angel. Yeah, which might mean you be born in an angelic realm as a Brahma. Vihara means the palace, a, a palace, an abode of a Brahma. Yeah? So meta karana muti t a u p e k a so loving kindness, generosity, basically. Karana, uh, no, so meta actually means compassion and uh, mm, the wish, uh, uh, um, empathy, empathy. Karana. Uh, Generosity, not compassion. Karuna is uh, generosity, uh, not just with money, but to help. Yeah, motita actually means the willingness to actually actively be generous and show compassion. So meta is compassion. Karuna is generosity. This is wrongly translated here. Motita is the willing and um, active, proactive intention. To want to help others, and ubeka is equanimity, meaning uh, uh, disattachment. When you know you tried to help, it didn't work. You tried your best, but you couldn't. So you're not going to suffer for it because you're enlightened enough to know that that won't change anything. Otherwise, you'll suffer if you practice love. Uh, if you practice compassion, generosity. And willingly apply that compassion and generosity by proactively actually practicing it with people. Uh, when you can't help, or you fail, or you get taken advantage of, if you don't have the fourth one, number forty-five, ubeka, to be able to stand apart from it, 
then you're going to suffer. So it's very important if you're going to master these first three of giving things that you have to have a big car, which means I'll give you a good worldly example. If you decide you're going to lend some money to somebody, don't lend it to them. Just decide you're going to give it to them, never expect it back. And if you get it back one day, you'll be happy. But if you don't, you won't be disappointed. Otherwise, this lack of a big car will make you suffer. Yeah. I'm tired of trying to hold things together that cannot be held, trying to control what cannot be controlled. Gamatan, the practice that leads to vipassana, is watching what's happening inside and outside and letting go because you are getting the insight that you cannot control it. Yeah. So you're tired of denying myself what I want for fear of breaking things I cannot fix. They will break no matter what we do. Yeah. So let go. Letting go is what Ajahn said. Shah said. So the next is the katu in Gamatan practice that leads to the attainment of vipassana, huh? special insight and awakened mind is. Formless meditation it says when in your jhana meditation you've already achieved this, you will become, you will achieve the state of mind where the truth you experience is the sphere of infinite space. After, then you go into the sphere of infinite consciousness. After that, you enter the sphere of imp of nothingness. After that, you enter the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. This is very deep jhana absorption, yeah. And it is there where you will see non-self and Buddhahood and enlightenment. Whether you bring it back with me, with you when you come out of the fourth jhana, which is one of the things you can achieve before enlightenment, which is a preview of enlightenment, and one of the main goals and attainments that can springboard your advancement in Gamatan to be able to one day achieve Vipatsana which is not the practice rather the goal so I'll end it with this first one on what is Vipatsana Vipatsana may your journey into Vipatsana Gamatan be one of discovery growth and deep deep transformation and awakening and lessening of all your sufferings. May your practices and your efforts according to how well you make them become the causes of awakening and your liberation from illusory thought and the prison of conditioned thought yeah, which conditions our perception of existence. So may all beings be happy including that which I consider to be myself and may we all know the true happiness that knows no end. That is enlightenment, arahanship, or if you like, awakenedness to the true nature of things. Or Nibbana, Prat Nibbana. Ajahn Spencer for the Buddha Magic Project. And hopefully... Any apologies to the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha for any mistakes I may have made, intentionally or unintentionally, knowingly or unknowingly. Ajahn Spencer, signing off.